What is up, Pittsburgh Steelers fans, and welcome back to another breaking news podcast. I am Jeff Hartman, joined by Brian Davis. Before we even get into the breaking news, a quick call to action. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, like the video. We do appreciate all of our subscribers. We're closing in on 11,000. We thank you for all of that. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, give us a five-star rating. We do appreciate it, and it does help. So, Brian, welcome to the show. How are you? Yeah, fantastic. Boy, it, it seems like Black Friday, Black and Gold Friday is uh is here and that's actually monday because i equate the nfl draft with christmas so mm-hmm. i believe the uh the silly season begins now absolutely and and you know a lot of people might be watching this or listening to this and saying well you know the, the news of russell wilson coming in and visiting the steelers is old news that's not really what we're talking about yes uh that news was broken on thursday around midday that Russell Wilson is planning on coming in and visiting the Steelers prior to free agency starting, which is everyone knows next Monday is when the tampering period starts next Wednesday is the official start of the NFL league year. And I think that what people need to understand is that when a player is released, just like with Mitch Trubisky signing with the Buffalo bills, they are a street free agent. They do not have to wait until free agency starts. So technically if the Steelers and Russell Wilson came to terms on a deal, They could get that done. I don't know if he's been officially released yet from the Denver Broncos, but still, Brian, I'm going to throw it to you. We've told you all that they were going to meet with this guy anyways, that there was interest there that if he takes the veteran minimum deal, which we will talk about in this podcast, it it makes too much sense. But Brian, we told him about this, didn't we? Yes, we did. And that's the glory of being able to have sources um, from inside the organization, inside the facility that let us know what's going on and things to look out for. We talked about this probably a month ago and this was something, in fact, we really first started talking about this right after the first, the playoff game was over the very next day. We started talking about the fact that they would be looking at some free agent quarterbacks, some veteran quarterbacks on the low end. So there's a lot of people that are still looking at Justin Fields. And we had a podcast that said, put that to bed. Yeah. And yeah. people are still thinking that that's a possibility. Yeah. And, and it we've, we said Russell Wilson because of the price tag. And that's the, the key factor here is the fact that he's going to be making over $30 million next year from the Denver Broncos. And he's not going to change the contract status so that they can save and recoup some of that money. In other words, he could go to the Steelers at a veteran minimum or just under 2 million or around $2 million that's unbelievably smart for the Steelers. Now, a lot of people are reading into this and saying, okay, if Russell Wilson comes to Pittsburgh, he's the starter, right? Not so much from our source. And we've been, our source has said this from day one, they're not going to turn their back on Kenny Pickett. That's the ongoing theme. Whenever we hear from our source is that they're not going to turn their back on Kenny Pickett. And they're still not going to turn their back on Kenny Pickett. But Russell Wilson coming to the Steelers, would be a proven commodity as an insurance policy. The last two years, we watched Mitch Trubisky. He did not get the job done. Would they still be interested in Mason Rudolph? I think that would be interesting. They say that they are, but still, if Russell Wilson comes in, you have someone that is a proven commodity as a backup. Kenny Pickett has yet to finish an entire season in both of his first two years due to injury. Brian, this would be the stability of an organization this would be the opportunity with Kenny Pickett potentially being injured or him not playing well enough. And this could be a pretty good spot for Russell Wilson too. Yeah, this is great. If you're Russell Wilson, you're thinking about a few things. First of all, you are thinking that Mason Rudolph is going to go elsewhere because you would have to feel in your heart and what the organization will be telling you and what your sources say. Everybody has sources and those agents, they're, they're, they're listening and they're finding out the complete landscape of what's going on way before anybody talks. So even though talks aren't happening, they're talk they're, they're happening in different ways with i uh, I'm not, I'm not saying there's that there's any kind of collusion here whatsoever. All I'm saying is that, by listening to what teams want to be doing and what, and you can find out what certain players are looking for. You kind of match up. You could, you could play match.com just that way. And so a lot of people do that in the media saying, Oh, this would be a good, this could happen, but they've got to know 
if you're a prospect, exactly what you're walking into. You don't want to do the Mitch Trubisky thing from two years ago where Mitch kind of feels like he was hoodwinked in a way. And by not knowing that uh, he wasn't the full-time starter, which they may have told him that. We don't know that. But the thing is, this kind of suggests to me, if they're bringing him in, that Mason Rudolph has a lot of suitors out there. Yeah. And so and, yeah, it's a good point. So the organization, if they're going to set up this meeting right now, they're not going to, I, I don't see them bringing both of them in. I see this as a situation is like, hey, we loved what Mason did with us. We wish him well with this uh, new fortune that he's found, but we've got to go ahead and be plan B because two weeks ago, Mason Rudolph was still plan A. They probably yeah. had to alter it. So the Steelers are sticking by Kenny Pickett. They're going to give him every opportunity to prove his worth. And if he doesn't, or if he gets injured again, now they have Russell Wilson, who, by the way, and this is something that I feel is just totally overblown by the media. And it's, that Russell Wilson is not a team player, that people don't like him. The guy was voted a captain when he was in Denver, and he was a captain as he won a Super Bowl and went to two with the Seattle Seahawks, just in case anyone doesn't realize this. And this is after being benched at the very end of the season and not playing the final, I think, two weeks. Russell Wilson threw for 3,070 yards last year, for twenty, had 26 touchdowns and only eight interceptions for a 98.0 quarterback rating on the season. And when you look back at his stats, his whole career, his career rating is 100 even. That's a really good quarterback. And that's a really good season last year. No, they didn't. He didn't throw for 4,000 yards or anything like that, but he had 3,000 yards in a pretty dysfunctional team and organization. I think that we, we know this from our source that Russell Wilson likes Mike Tomlin. He views the Steelers as a stable organization and he sees their quarterback room as a potential spot for him to resurrect his career and maybe have a swan song towards the end of his career. People may disagree with that, and that's fine. You have your own opinions and prerogatives, and that's okay. But ultimately, I look at this. The Steelers see Russell Wilson on a veteran minimum deal. Veteran minimum deal. If he's asking for more, that's probably not going to work in Pittsburgh. They can see it as a great move. My question for you, Brian, is do you think the Steelers roster – is intriguing enough that Russell Wilson would not just want the head coach of Mike Tomlin, the stability of the organization, but also want to come to Pittsburgh because if he gets an opportunity, he has a really good roster around him. You know, one thing that he has always had was have a running game around him. You know, yeah. early on in his career, he had Marshawn Lynch. Mm -hmm. He's had some other guys. Turbin was one of them um, in Seattle, you know, in with the Broncos, He's had some guys that could carry the pill and carry it well. When you look at the, not just one running back, but you have two that you've got to really like the fact that you have, it's not a, even a two headed monster. It's a two headed opportunity because both of these guys, Jalen Warren and Najee Harris are going to get opportunities and it's a very good system for Russell Wilson as well. Then you look at the fact that you have a guy that everybody thinks has the potential, if he has the right quarterback, to be a Pro Bowl receiver in the right system. Now, I want to say that in the right system because Kenny Pickett and George Pickens in the right system, if Arthur Smith's system is right, they could be very good too. But if you're Russell Wilson, you know the fact that you're going to have opportunities because of Kenny Pickett's health because of any quarterback's health, because it's hard to see a quarterback go 17 games in the NFL these days. It's really hard for that to happen. I mean, the odds are, this is a stat key question. We'll have to talk to talk to Dave about uh, starting percentages each and every yeah. year. But it, it, it's really hard for, for you to envision that Kenny's going to have the job the entire time, but the Pittsburgh Steelers are an organization that are going to honor that. They're going to uh, they're going to give Kenny Pickett every opportunity, and you have a guy coming in at a veteran minimum. If he does indeed come in, if a, a crazy offer doesn't come from out of the blue, and if it does, I understand. But this is a great opportunity, not only for Russell Wilson, but actually it's a good opportunity for Kenny Pickett. 
Yeah, because he will – again, I, I believe that the the overarching media narrative on Russell Wilson being a jerk and not being a team player is highly overblown. But again, Then again, I'm an outsider. I'm an outsider. I don't follow the Denver Broncos, nor do you. We just hear what's being spoken about. I'd have to dive into that if, if that even becomes a situation. But the Steelers are interested. They're not turning their back on Kenny Pickett. That's the important information here about this meeting. It's going to have to come down to financials. I'll be really curious to see if it's more than a one-year deal. Because if you think about it, if they were to get a one-year deal for Russell Wilson, if it doesn't pan out and you get him at a veteran minimum price, or let's say he never even plays and Kenny Pickett plays well, okay, it's a one-year deal. Like you're, you'll be fine. Like you're not breaking the, breaking the bank here. It's a very low-risk move, in my opinion. But Brian, any final thoughts on everything? Yeah, Jeff, I believe that the Steelers had some intel out there thinking that if they bring him in, they, if they bring him in, they probably feel they have a pretty good chance to sign him and to be on the same page. I think the Steelers would know if they weren't on the same page, they wouldn't even bring him in. So I think they have an idea um, through channels. Let's just put it that way, that uh, this could be a fine fit for them because you're not going to go shopping if you can't afford that store. It's true. Very true. Very true. Now make sure you're following us. SteelCurtainNetwork.com is the website. We have the latest and greatest news there, right there at SteelCurtainNetwork.com. All of our audio only podcasts, like my Let's Ride podcast and Brian's Bad Language, wherever you get your podcast by searching Steelers or Steel Curtain Network. And like I said, on YouTube, give us a like, subscribe to the channel. We do appreciate a lot of good stuff there. Brian, thank you for the time. It's been a breaking news podcast. We will see y'all next time. Take it easy.